Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. I'm glad today that I know who Jesus is. I know that he is my healer. I know that he is my direction. I know that he is my peace. And he is my joy in the time of trouble. I'm so glad that I know who Jesus is. And on top of all of that, we put a little whipped cream on it. And I'm so glad that I know that he knows me. Hallelujah. That he is my protector and my all and my all. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God today, hallelujah. Somebody said, are there still miracles being worked? I'm a witness today that there are still miracles. God is still performing great miracles. On just the other day, my little great-granddaughter was out with her other grandmother. Someone tried to kidnap her. Hallelujah, and when I got the call, it looked like my body was shifted from here, from the inside, and the shell was still here. I began to think, how in the world do people, or how are they able to comprehend? How are they able to live with this kind of thing? Hallelujah, but I thank God. I thank God, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah. Somebody tried to snap her. There was a stranger on the side. No one that we knew, but hallelujah. And we began to say it must have been an angel. Her dad tried to find the man afterwards, but we could not see him. I find him anywhere. People of God count your many blessings. Uh, hallelujah. Don't take God for granted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. Pray every day. Uh, stay connected uh, with God. Uh, we use all these devices and we need chargers. The battery will run down and we got to run and get a charger. But I'm telling you today that our God is our charger. Stay connected. Hallelujah. Stay connected to God. Hallelujah. The devil is on a rampage. I believe I told you last week, and it's still true today, but thanks be to God, he is right there. Hallelujah, walking with us. Hallelujah, he's right there directing us. What a mighty God. My soul doth magnify the Lord. My God hath rejoiced. I rejoiced in God, my Savior. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve. And I'm glad that his name is Jesus. And I'm so glad my soul's desire. I've been telling the Lord the last couple of weeks, my soul's desire is to have a closer walk with you. My soul's desire, Lord, above all else, that I might serve him, that I might be obedient unto him. I love the Lord, and I'm so glad for his love today. I'm so glad for the people of God that has assembled here today. Thank God that he's brought us through another week. And as I said before, we don't take these things for granted. Honey, I've got some situations that I could tell you how God has blessed, how God has delivered. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All we need to do is wait on him. He may not come when you want him, but wait on him. In due time, he will show up at the right time. We thank him for his word. We thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost that keeps us. Hallelujah. I'm glad we can jump and run and shout and just magnify Jesus. Even in your kitchen, honey, sometime I'm cooking. Thank you, Lord. I begin to think of the goodness of Jesus. Just me and the Lord. Hallelujah. Just me and the Lord. Hallelujah.
hallelujah, having the time of our life. If you do not know him, you are missing the best part of your life, hallelujah. If you do not know him, come to know him. His name is Jesus. He loved you so much that he shed his own blood on the cross for me and for you. He's cleansed us. He's delivered. He set us free. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the nighttime, hallelujah. He's always there. We thank the Lord for our pastor and for the word that he gives out to us. We thank the, the, our pastor for the love that he has to tell us what thus saith the Lord. It doesn't always sound good. It doesn't always smell good, but it's good. It's what we need for our souls. We teach our children, you got to eat your vegetables. You want to grow and be strong. You want to be like Mighty Mouse and all these others. Uh, honey, you want to be somebody in Jesus. We got to take it all. We got to eat the whole loaf. And I'm so glad today, hallelujah, for the desire that God's put down in me. Do nothing of my own, hallelujah, but because God called me out of darkness into the marvelous light and I thank him today and I magnify, magnify him. Pray for your children. Pray for your family every day. We need God to cover us like never before. All that we need is in Jesus. God bless you, hallelujah. And may the joy of the Lord forever be your strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord for those words of encouragement. But man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We ask the saints of God as you stand in reverence of God's word and the man of God, our pastor, Bishop Rader Johnson. Let's receive our pastor by saying, praise the Lord, pastor. services thus far. We thank you for everyone that's here, the words of encouragement, all the songs of Zion, your presence being here with us. We pray, Lord, that your word would have free course in the lives of your people here, those that are watching us from far and near. Stretch out your holy hand. You said your word will not return unto you void. It shall accomplish that which you please. Prosper when to you have sent it. Oh, God, right now, send a blessing along someone's way, somebody that needs you right now. There are needs in this house. There are needs in the lives of your people. You're the God that can supply all of our needs. We thank you for answering our prayer, watching over our children. Oh, Lord, our loved ones, keeping them and protecting them from the devil that is lurking about out there. Oh, God, we thank you for being a God that answers prayer. It's a blessing, Lord, that we're able to talk to you and you will hear what we have to say that you will answer, oh God, what we petition you for. Now, Lord, we pray that someone will be convicted, someone will come to know you in the pardon of their sins, trouble the waters in the baptism pool. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're grateful and thankful grateful and thankful to be in the house of the Lord and it's good to see everyone and of course our good friends Deacon Collier and his wife are here all the way from Bay City, Michigan, District Elder Philip Johnson is the pastor and, and we're just so happy I was they said they wanted to surprise me they did I was completely shocked that they are here and uh, um, praise the Lord I, we worked in the prison together. Amen. I was on my way out. I don't even think I waved to him after I left. I just left. <laughs> but I think he has. Are you retired yet? You still got a little more to go. Huh? Still got a little more. We're praying for you. <laughs> and his precious wife there, we just love them. And we just are so grateful and thankful uh, that they come to be with us. So we plan on spending some time with them after service and we're happy for all of our visitors that are here 
on this afternoon. Amen. You could have been any other place, but you chose to be here with us, and we are so honored, so grateful um, for you being here with us. Good to see Deacon Charles continue to pray for Sister Diane. Can we say amen? Amen. And we continue to pray for her in a special way that God would uh, raise her up. I believe that he will. He can. That's, the, that's what he does. Amen. That's what he does. And, of course, we cannot uh, go any further without giving honor to the First Lady of this church, First Lady Rhoda Johnson. Amen. Amen. She's, she's looking real beautiful today. And I'm glad she's with me. <laughs> I'm glad she's with me. It's been an honor. It's, it is an honor. I shouldn't say it's been an honor, but it is an honor uh, to be your husband. I never thought that the Lord would bless me. That's why I'm so thankful because God has really blessed me uh, in my life, uh, in the midst of where I came from, in the midst of what my family was. I was talking to my uncle uh, on yesterday, and um, he, he, he called me the hero of the family. I said, Jesus is the hero. I'm just, I'm the zero. <laughs> He's the hero, but, but, but uh, we just thank the Lord. Being saved is just a wonderful, wonderful life. And, um, I can't imagine my life without the Lord. So um, without further ado, we're going to go into the word of the Lord and two passages of scriptures. Uh, that we have for you today. We won't be before you long. Um, it seems like that when I get up to the podium, I get tired real, all of a sudden. Um, but, but we know that the, the Holy Ghost can quicken you, right? Amen. And uh, we want to give our praise team a hand and our choir a hand and our musicians a hand that are coming, coming right along. We thank the Lord uh, for them. Praise the Lord. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Somebody said, where is that? It's in the Bible. Micah chapter 7. You don't hear that scripture called too often, do you? I'm going to ask everyone to stand in reference to the word of the Lord, if you can. Amen. In reference to God, we stand in the courtroom. Is that right? Amen. Stand in the courtroom for the judge that ain't going to give us no justice. Thank you. But this court, this court is, amen, the house of God. Is that right? Micah chapter 7. Then we were going to go to Genesis chapter 50. And it reads, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be a light unto me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. Genesis chapter number 50, the last chapter of the book of beginnings. And we want to begin reading there, I believe, at verse number 15. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 through 20. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thy father did command. Notice they said thy father. They didn't say our father. They said thy father did command before he died saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee, the trespass of thy brethren. And their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. If you can say these words uh, with me is what we want to talk about. God will give you, will give you a, bounce back. a bounce back. Amen. God, you may be seated. 
God will give you a bounce back. Amen. All you got to do is hold on and hang in there. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Micah, the scripture in Micah, is a prophecy of the church falling in the dark ages. That when the apostles died, um, the church went into almost complete darkness over a long period of time. And it wasn't very long that the false doctrines began to come and the false prophets began to rise up because the defenders of the faith were gone. The apostles were gone. They prophesied about the times that were to come. Peter talked about as there were prophets among the people, there will be false prophets. Paul said, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. They gave us a lot of warnings, even some cautionary tales there that spoke of the difficult times that lied ahead. The persecutions had taken its toll upon the church. Many of the Christians had been martyred and killed because they refused to deny Jesus Christ. The Bible says they love not their lives to death. They rather die to turn away from God. Amen. I wish we had that kind of faith today. Can we say amen? In this country, we're not so much as faced with uh, death concerning walking with Jesus. The problem that we have today in this country is that whether or not people will actually live for him, whether they would actually deny themselves, whether they would deny the pleasures of sin, as Moses did, he uh, chose rather to suffer with the people of God than to joy to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But God is the kind of God that he will not uh, leave you in the dark. He is the kind of a God that no matter what kind of difficulty you go through, if you go through it with the right attitude, you can bounce back. He'll bring you back. And, and when you look up to turn bounce back, it means to return quickly to a normal condition after a difficult situation or difficult event. But the problem is many times is that we as human beings are impatient. We are so used to making our own way that a lot of times we take matters into our own hands and rely upon our own skill and our own intellect to try to better our situation. And sometimes we are successful with that, but then there are times where we can't do anything about our situation. We need a miracle. We need the hand of God to step in. The enemy's job is to get us in a position to where uh, when we call upon God, that he won't respond to us. That get us in a position to where um, we are in a state to where uh, because of how we live that we don't have the faith that God would actually move in our behalf because we have not been toward him the way that we ought to be. And this is what a lot of people uh, suffer because um, it is during those times when everything is fine and we're on the mountain. That is the most important time. That is the most dangerous time. Because when everything is going well and, and we're feeling good and looking good and, and everything seems to be clicking, amen, it puts us in a position to, uh, that we don't really rely on God as we would if things are rough. But that is the time we really need him most. That when everything is going all right, we don't want to be in a position or get ourselves in a position to forget the goodness of God that is extended to us. And a lot of times, the only way we can prevent that from happening is to look back at where he brought us from. Amen, that though we might be on the mountain now, we're not gonna always be on the mountain, but while I'm on the mountain, I'm gonna give him a praise. While I'm on the mountain, I'm gonna worship him. 
because it means more then than it does when I'm down in the valley. Amen. We don't want to forget God. And that's what the cautionary tale that Moses gave the children of Israel, that when you go into the promised land and you began to inherit all the blessings that God said that you were going to get, amen, and inheriting a land that you did not work for, inheriting houses and all types of good things in the land that you didn't work for. And when you are full and fat and everything, amen, is like a paradise, don't forget, amen, that how you got there. Can we say amen? Don't forget what the Lord has done for you, amen, because we're not always going to be on the mountain. Amen. We're not always going to be doing all right. There are going to be some dark days that come sometime. And if you have a mind to remember God in the good times, God will remember you in the bad times. Then the church shout hallelujah. Amen. That's what people tend to forget a lot of times. I've known saints that have gotten rich and preachers that have gotten rich. And praise the Lord, when they were struggling and battling, they were closer to God at that time. But since they, as they like to say, have made it, amen, they don't pray like they used to pray. they not as consecrated as they used to be. They don't even go to church as they used to go to church. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Amen. It's a dangerous thing, saints of God, is that when good times, when we are experiencing, amen, the paradise of this life, we can never forget God. But if you always look back to see where he brought you from, if you always take out time to remember the dark days, they will help you to appreciate the good days. And, and when the darker days come, praise the Lord, for God to give you a greater experience, a greater revelation to show you, amen, his power in a greater way. Amen. When you turn to him, amen, he has to give you a bounce back because you remembered him when the blessings came. Amen. And he remembered you when the dark days came. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's a lot of examples in the Old Testament of individuals that, amen, have been down in the dumps. And, and even you all that are sitting here today, many of you all have a lot of testimonies as to how the Lord brought you back. Amen. From, amen, near death. Amen. Death seemed to be knocking at your door. Some of y'all heard death knocking. I can never forget when I was amen, dealing with Sister Henderson and how, amen, she just thought it was just over for her. Amen. Have anybody ever been in that position where you just, amen, uh, uh, cancer, when they come and tell you that you got cancer, can you imagine how that feels? Some of y'all know how that feels. I remember Sister Shorter telling me how she went into the doctor and they diagnosed her with cancer and it didn't really hit her, amen, at the moment. She says, well, uh, 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 is there a pill that you can give me to take care of this thing? Because, amen, I got things to do in my life and all that. And the doctor had to tell her four or five times, listen, you have cancer. Amen. There is no pill that can make it go away. Can we say amen? There's no exercise. There's no mental positive thinking that can cause it to go away. You have cancer. Lord have mercy. Amen. It didn't hit her until after she got out into the car. Amen. But she had enough sense to go to the house of the man of God. Y'all ain't hearing me. Praise the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. But God gave her a bounce back because here she is today. Amen. Some of y'all don't like her, but that's all right. God has stepped in for her. And the church shout hallelujah. Amen. Sister Henderson's testimony. I remember on the phone, she, amen, wanted to make her funeral arrangements. And something just rose up in me. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. I'm just not, I'm just not accepting that. We're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to look to God. Amen. He'll give you a bounce back, saints. Don't ever think it's over. It's never over until God says it's over. You're never finished until God says it's finished. Amen. You are never down and out until God says so. Uh, he's got the last word. Not the doctor. Not your uh, criticizers. Uh, he's got the last word. Uh, he'll give you. He'll give you a bounce back. Uh, if you got the right attitude. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We all know the story. There's a whole lot of Bible stories. I don't have time, amen, to go through all of them. Amen. But Micah prophesied, amen, concerning the church of God and how, amen, praise the Lord, it was going to fall and it did fall. Amen. Because the Catholic Church was founded, amen, in 150 AD. Amen. And many of the denominations that came along years later, amen, to the point to where many of the saints had been killed. John Fox's Book of Martyrs states, amen, that since the day of Pentecost, there have been something like 50 millions of Christians that have been martyred. You see, if the devil can't get you to backslide, he'll try to kill you. And the church shout hallelujah. Amen. He'll try to put you in the grave. Amen. Because he does not want to see you prosper. He does not want to see you make it with God. Amen. Some of you all that are not saved today, he don't want you to get saved. And the church shout hallelujah. Oh yes. Amen. When altar call time comes, you just wait. Let me prophesy to those of you all that are not saved yet. When we make the altar call at the end of service, huh, you're going to have all kind of thoughts that come in your mind huh, as to why you are not ready to walk down the aisle. Huh. Can I get a witness in here? Huh? Anybody remember how that was? Huh? Amen. All kinds of thoughts. What are you going to tell your grandmother? Huh? You need to ask your grandmother. Huh? You need to ask your preacher. Huh? Amen. What are your children going to think? Huh? You ain't going to be able to smoke the reefer no more. Huh? I think they're still calling that. Oh, excuse me, cannabis now. Huh? In the church, uh, hallelujah. Huh? Amen. All that liquor you got at home, huh? you got to pour all that out. Huh? Amen. But when God is really calling you, huh? Amen. And you know in your heart huh, that you can't make it without Jesus. Huh? You'll pass by the cannabis. Huh? You'll pass by the alcohol. Huh? You might even tell your girlfriend, huh? goodbye. Huh? I found another partner huh? and his name is Jesus. Huh? Come on, clap your hands huh? and say glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Huh? Come on and say hallelujah. Huh? Oh yes, it's going to happen. Huh? And at the same time, I believe huh? that God can lift you up out that pew. Huh? And every step you take toward him uh, as you walk down this altar, uh, he'll be taking a step towards you. Uh, and the church shout hallelujah. Uh, well, the Bible prophesy. Uh, amen. In the Bible times, uh, in the scriptures, uh, amen, that the false prophets, uh, amen, will eat away up the church. Uh, and that the apostolic doctrine uh, will go into a period of darkness. Uh, I heard the Lord say, uh, Amen, that he would restore the years huh, that the canker worm and the caterpillar huh, and the palmer worm have eaten away. Huh. You see, nothing takes God by surprise. Huh. In the church, uh, hallelujah. Huh. He knew the persecutions would come. Huh. He knew uh, Nero would be uh, Nero would be beheaded. Huh. The apostle Paul, he knew huh, that all of his disciples huh, would be martyred. Uh, through mar uh, a martyr's death. Huh? Him, the church, uh, hallelujah. Huh? Amen. He knew that John uh, would live to be nearly a hundred years old huh? and would die a natural death. Huh? Him, the church, shout hallelujah. Huh? He knew huh, that the Catholic church would come huh? and that they would, uh, amen, began to deify Mary. Huh? They began to deify huh? Many of the so-called dead saints, huh? amen, that they considered, huh? amen, that if you pray to, huh? amen, certain blessings would come your way. Huh? Amen, he knew and understood, huh? amen, that the apostolic doctrine, huh? amen, would sort of almost die out completely, huh? amen, because uh, of all of the denominations coming, huh? amen, but I want you to know and understand, huh? And we serve a God uh, that's able to cause things to bounce right back. Huh? Because down in the 1850s, huh, they began to see holiness in the Bible. Huh? And they began to notice, huh, amen, that a man needs to live holy. Huh? And holiness churches began to spring up. Huh? And God decided huh, it was time to bring back huh, what had been here before. Huh? And here we are, sip in 2023. Amen. All of us have been down in Jesus' name. Some of us. And filled with the Holy Ghost. 
to where there's over 300 apostolic organizations throughout the world and hundreds of thousands of churches that are preaching and teaching that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. I'm going to say hallelujah. He brought it all back, y'all. Amen. Even in, if you check the record books, amen, you'll find that in the 1850s, as it again began to get to 1900, there was recorded a few folk being filled with the Holy Ghost in different parts of our country before it actually came, amen, to America. And if you look up in the encyclopedia, of Britannica, they call it the glossolalia experience. And the church said, hallelujah. And there were records and accounts of folk in church services. Amen. Bursting out, speaking in tongues. Or as they say, with the glossolalia experience. Amen. And it became something. Amen. Like a new phenomenon. Amen. But all God was doing is he was bringing things back. Amen. To where they began. Because he's a God that brings bounce backs. And the Bible and the history tell us rather. And you all know the story. Amen. About Charles Parham. And the church said hallelujah. You know the story. About William J. Seymour. And the Azusa Street Mission. What was all of that? God was bringing back, amen, the apostolic church. God was bringing back a bounce back because he knew that one day you'd be born. He knew that one day you would go to an apostolic church because you realize your denomination wasn't getting it. Can I get a witness up in here? You understood uh, uh, that praying to Mary uh, uh, wasn't giving you no results. Uh, uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, any former Catholics up in here that uh, uh, used to pray the rosary, uh, uh, but you didn't feel nothing? Uh, uh, any former Jehovah Witnesses in here uh, uh, that all they talked about Jehovah uh, uh, and said nothing about Jesus? Uh, uh, any former Baptist folk in here? Uh, uh, that was Baptist born, Baptist bred, and you said you'd be Baptist until you're dead. But I hear the Lord saying, through the mouth of Michael, I hear him the Lord saying, through the mouth of the prophet Micah, rejoice not over me, oh my enemy, when I fall, because while I sit in darkness, God is going to be a light to me. Don't get too happy. You know, I told the devil that one day. I said, Satan, you might have me down now, but don't get too happy. God will raise me back up. God will bring me back. Clap your hand and say, Glory. Say yeah. I called the pause to tell you. Don't just sit there. Amen. In your misery. And think it's all over. Because you can't think of a way out. Just ask God, Lord. Give me a bounce back. Because there's too many examples. In the word of God. That folk were down. And leveled to the ground. But you swooped in uh, and picked them up. Uh, and they didn't look like uh, what they had been through. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Just a hint of uh, Don't look like uh, what she been through. Uh, just a shorter. Uh, don't look like uh, what she been through. Uh, some of y'all out there uh, that have gone through. Uh, you look better than you ever had. What happened to you? God gave me. I said, God gave me. 
God gave me a, a bounce back. I'm back. Give him the praise. I'm back. Praising him in this house. I'm back. Speaking in tongues. I'm back. Clap your hands. I say, I'm back. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. I wish I had a, a witness, y'all. But as I hear ringing in my ear, I hear the porch patriarch. I hear the patriarch Job saying, Bishop, I'm a witness that God will give you a bounce back. Because the devil killed my family, stole my goods, wife walked out, walked out on me, my health, I didn't think I was going to make it, I had some friends, I thought I could depend on, but all they did was beat me down. Anybody know anything about that? When your friends beat you down, I don't understand, but I stop by to tell you, the Lord didn't forget about me. I came back, I got a new wife, I got more children, I'm richer than I ever been. Clap your hands and say glory. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Joseph said, God gave me a bounce back because my brothers they hated me. Come on, it's here. They sold me down into slavery. They thought it was all over. I even was lied on and put in prison. Come on, it's here. But God didn't forget about me. And I stopped by to tell y'all, some of y'all that are going through, God told me to tell you, he ain't forgot about you. Come on and say, yeah. He see your tears. He feels your pain. He sees what you're going through. You've been hurt in and out the church. And he said, hold on. Hold on. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. We'll come back. We'll bounce back. He'll give you a praise. He'll bring you out. Just hold on. Hang in there. We've been made. And go for a night. But in the morning. Bouncing back. In the morning. Joy. Comes in the morning. Clap your hand and say glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Glory to his name. Lord, have mercy. It ain't never over for you. It might look like that it's over. Folk might tell you it's over. But God said it ain't over. Hallelujah. And the ultimate bounce back was Jesus. In a church of hallelujah. They thought he was done. Beat him all night long. Said, you, if you be the son of God, come down off the cross. You healed all these folk. Look at you now. Defenseless, hanging on the cross. Even Pilate got to boasting. And when he went down, when he went before Pilate, and Pilate was asking him all them questions. I heard Pilate say, don't you know 
Amen. I got the power to let you go or not. And I see Jesus slip back into his Godhood in the church of hallelujah. Because he was not only man, but he was God. As God, he said, if my kingdom was of this world, I call my angels. I ain't got to do it myself. I call my angels and they'll fight for me. He was telling Pilate, don't get it twisted, Pilate. I'm letting you do what you're doing. Sometimes God will let folk do you wrong so that he can give you a bounce back. Sometimes you're so focused on the folk doing you wrong, you can't see what God's trying to do with you. Can we say amen? You're too focused on what they said to you that hurt you. You're too focused upon what they did to you. You're too focused upon how they ignored you. You're too focused upon how they won't recognize you. You're too focused upon how they won't honor you. You need to look up and see Jesus. And say, Lord, what are you trying to do for me? Because he's trying to do something for you. You can't go higher without struggles. Jesus went as high as you can go. They saw him die. They saw him beaten. They saw him bloody. Didn't even look like a human being. Saw him in the worst state they could ever see him. That was their last memory of him. But I see in the book of Revelation when he appears to John in that vision. And John didn't know who he was. <laughs> see, sometimes when God gives you a bounce back, people look at you, they don't, are you the same person? Are you the same one? It can't be. And Jesus had to tell him, fear not, John. I'm he that was dead. But I got a bounce back. And I'm alive forevermore. altar workers move in place. Saints, if we can have the right attitude about what we're going through, when you're going through something, God is working on you. Don't focus so much on people. Get your mind on Jesus. Let me say amen. amen. That's what I practice doing. People attack me all the time. And because I ignore it so much, sometimes the devil sends folk to tell me what they're saying and doing. Not every person that comes in for me is the devil. I said, the devil does. Praise the Lord. Because my mind is on the Lord. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And I'm here to tell you, it works. Get your mind off of people and get your mind on Jesus. Because if the rapture takes place in the next few minutes, what is it going to matter? Can we say amen? What is it really going to matter? That's where my mind is. My mind is on if the Lord comes right now. So what, they cussed you out. Just say within yourself, well, if the Lord comes right now, I ain't going to be thinking about what they said. See, the devil wants you to think about what they said. The devil wants you to think about what they did to you. Jesus didn't think about that. If Jesus was so caught up in what they did to him, he never could have came out that grave. If he thought so much about what they were saying to him, he would have came down off the cross. I need to handle my business. Y'all don't know. He didn't come down to save himself, the songwriter said. But he hung there just for me and just for you. God is calling you. He's calling somebody. If you strayed away from God, you've been in church, you strayed away, come on, let him give you a bounce back. You can bounce back. You can come back and be better than you ever was before. I've seen it happen. That's the type of God he is. Why do you think Jesus let them brutalize him so? He had to be brutalized. He had to be killed to come back. 
and to be glorified. Can I get a witness in here? People have overlooked me all my life, all my life, in church and out of church. I was the first member in Bishop Combs Church. All the other ministers were elevated above me. Different ones were made associate pastor, and I was there way before them. Bishop Tim Johnson, Kerry Calloway, Michael Shaw, Ralph Johnson, Arnita Robinson, and I was the first member. They all came afterwards. But I didn't complain. My mind was on the Lord. I'm not boasting, I'm testifying. Can we say amen? God gave me a bounce back. Praise the Lord. Out of all those ministers, the only one that came out successful out of that pact, and we had like 17, 18 preachers, is myself and Bishop Tim Johnson, and of which I don't put myself on his level because that man established nine apostolic churches in Alabama. Get your mind off of people and what people do and say to you. Get your mind on heaven. You can give me a song, Melita, as the Lord leads you. Get your mind on heaven. And therefore, those that mistreat you you can still love them as if they did nothing to you. Oh, am I in the right church? You can still smile. That's God bouncing you back. Can we say amen? We are all in the hands of God. The Lord is calling you, young man. The Lord is calling you, sister. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, if you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, the Lord is calling you right now. It's what's happening to you right now, what I said was going to happen when I started preaching. Apparently it is because some of you that know you need to come, you're not coming. God is calling you. You need God. You need the Lord in these evil times. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Take me back. Whoa, take me back. Take me back to Lord. Right, first. I'm always asking God to do that for me. I'm always asking him to do that for me. Take me back. He's calling you. Come on. Come on, repent. Take me back. Be baptized Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the place for the remission of your sins. Where God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Come on. It's not too late for you. Take me back. It's not over for you. Take me back to where I don't care what the doctor said. First There's somebody that made the doctors. He's got the last say. Take me back. Whoa, Jesus. Take me back to the place. The place where I. Come on, he's calling. He's calling you, he's calling you, he's calling you, he's calling you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I 
Yes, 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 yes. What will you have me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do, Jesus? Yes. Take me back. Yes, I'm here for you, Lord. Take You've been good to me. I know I ain't been right, but you've been to merciful to me. I want to recognize you. I want to acknowledge you. Come on, back. come on, come on. Yes. yes. Take me back to Lord where God, I God is here. God is here, y'all. Jesus is here. Really yes, yes. Those you are the online. The Lord has something for you. He has something for you out there. It's not over for you. Yes. Take me back to Lord. To the place. To the place. Where I Come on, can you sing that song? Take me back. Take me back. Please, Jesus. Take me back. Dear Lord, where I first believe. Come on, pray that prayer, y'all. Hey. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back. I, I want to be better for you, Jesus. I mean, I've got cold and callous, Lord. I don't want to be cold and callous. Sensitize me. Take me back. Yes, Lord, to that tenderness in your heart. Come on, give up to Jesus. One more time. Take me back. One more time. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Take me back. I want to get back. Take me back, dear Lord. To the place. To the place. Yes, yes. Everything, everything generally goes back to where it was before. When you think about life, things always go back to where they were before. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt what? We have a lot to be thankful for. We complain too much. We could have been in Maui, jumping in the river, trying to escape the firebomb. We need to pray for those people down there. But God has been good to you. Even though you know you haven't been what you ought to be, he's still watching over you. I treasure the most being saved is talking to the Lord and he hears what I have to say that's the thing that's most important to me that when I talk to God in behalf of his people he responds that means more to me than anything That takes a certain discipline. That takes a certain mindset. And every time I preach and teach, I'm trying to pass that on to you because I know it works. The biggest complaint people have when they pray is that they don't get an answer. They don't get a response. There's nothing wrong with God. You have to look at yourself. Can we say amen? Sometimes when I'm online and checking our sound and, and everything and my daughter puts the titles of the sermon there as I check, 
lot of times I'm amazed at how all of the sermons seem to be connected and the Bible classes are connected. You know, we just got done preaching. Lord, help me to what? Y'all done forgot already? I didn't notice that until I think our first appreciation service that y'all had for me, which was the first one I ever had in my life. And I think it was Sister Elena that got up here and she went through a lot of my sermons, how they're all connected. She had a revelation I didn't have. I was like, really? I said, that does fit. That's God doing that, that's not me. Because I care so much about what he wants and what his people needs are that I'm always before him. It ain't never about me. See, my father was very abusive as we close. And he beat women. And um, what he did to my sisters, we all know that. But with me, he beat me down mentally to, to where I suffer from low self-esteem to this day. Every girlfriend I had, somebody stole from me. Every one. The first girlfriend I had, I was eight years old. She was 13, you know. What was wrong with that 13 year old? No, my rap game was good at eight. But I lost every girlfriend that I had. So then I got saved. Praise the Lord. And I said, Lord, I need a woman that is ugly to everybody else, but pretty to me. Sometimes we don't know what we be talking about when we talking to God, don't we? I'm glad he didn't hear that prayer. <laughs> or maybe he heard that prayer and said, boy, you don't know what you're talking about. Because when I saw Sister Rhoda after she got the Holy Ghost, I said, is that the same woman? And some of the brothers were saying yes. I said, uh-oh. The Lord bless me. What a wonderful, wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. And there's nothing I won't do for her. Whatever she wants, I try to do it for her. She told me, I want all your money. I said, you really don't want that. If you really did, I would give it to you. No, I do. No, you don't, honey. She got it anyway because any successful marriage, what's hers is hers and what's yours is hers, right? I ain't rolling like that. I ain't, I ain't rolling like that. Well, you won't be rolling with a good woman then. My father told me, boy, you don't give women money. Women give you money. Cause I ain't no pimp. That was that pimp talk. But what caused me to run to Jesus is that I did not want to be like that guy. And y'all know what I'm talking about? They say you're a product of your environment and how you were raised in the home, you're prone to be that way. That's true until Jesus comes into the mix. Can we say amen? He changes everything as we close. So I'm so glad to be saved. I'm honored to be your pastor. It is an honor and a privilege to be in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking forward to glory. I'm looking forward. God bless you. And be encouraged. Those of you all that are going through sickness, be encouraged. The Lord has not forgotten you. Those of you going through difficult times, hang in there. Amen. His grace is keeping you. 
He's getting glory out of you that he could not get any other kind of way. You are stronger than you think. You are closer to heaven than you think. Y'all hear me? And those of you all that know you need to get it together, ask God to help you get it together. He will. Can we say amen? He will. Because he wants us to get it together more than we want to get it together. And don't stop praying for what you're asking the Lord for just because it ain't happened yet. You keep on praying. You keep on talking to him. He's hearing you. He's, he told me to tell you, he's hearing you. Let me say amen. He's hearing you. You just make sure that you are doing everything that you know that you're supposed to do. As God has revealed to you out of his word as you've been taught. And everything is going to be all right. Amen. Brothers, we need all our brothers that are part of the brotherhood. Those of you all that are not, get on in the brotherhood. Can we say amen? <laughs> You're a brother in this church. Get in the hood. I might preach that. As the scripture says, love the brotherhood. Get in the hood. Wouldn't that be something? I'm going to write that down. I go back to my office. What's the brotherhood of the church? Can we say amen? We're not, talking, we're, not, we're not talking about the ghetto place. That's pretty good, though. The ghetto is the life that I live that God brought me out of. Isn't that something? I'm, I'm, I'm going to work with that, Sister Allison. I'm going to work with that. I'm going to work with that. He brought me from the ghetto. Well, I'm still in the ghetto. I'm talking spiritually. Can we say amen? I'm talking but he can bring you out of that too, is that right? Nowadays, every place is almost a ghetto, right? A devil acting up everywhere, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So, brothers, we need your $20 donation to make the picnic. Lord, have mercy. We talked about where the word picnic came from. It's a racial term. And they weren't talking about picnic food. They were talking about picking black folk that they didn't call them that. They call them the other term. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Go pick a, you know, and lynch them and abuse them. That's where the word come from. So we're not using that word. We're calling a fellowship. What a fellowship. So, so let's... Um, Maybe I did deal with that in Bible class, words that we use that are not, you know, that would be, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? My mind is always running, ain't it? Well, why don't, tell, why don't you tell it to stop so we can get out? I'm doing that right now. <laughs> so we need your $20, brother. See uh, Minister Julian. Where's Minister Julian at? See Minister Julian? They put him behind there because they don't want nobody to see him. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I'm just joking. Let's all stand. If there be no more announcements. Uh, Christian Outlooks is $7, $7. And remember Brother Cord and his family. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. If you want to um, give Brother Cord a dish or something, you can feel free and do that. Amen. Church is going to give him something to encourage him because uh, he's one of our own, isn't he? Amen. And we love him. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the saints that are here friends and visitors that I hear, and Lord, your word that has gone forth. Encourage your people's heart. I did the best that I could under these circumstances, and Lord, I know that you would take it the rest of the way. Your word would not return unto you void. It shall accomplish that which you please. Prosper when you do have sent it. Bless our online saints in a mighty way, as well as those that are in the house here. Remember Sister Diane and others that are absent from our midst. Let your blood prevail. Let your blood cover. We thank you for watching over our children. We pray that you continue to do so. And watch over the parents. And watch over all of us and bring us back at the appointed time. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Let's give God a great big hand clap. God bless you. Let's praise the Lord with somebody.